لسالے کا ہدا ہوں نو آفٹر آفٹر آل دس پرسویشن ایون اف آفٹر آل دس پرسویشن پیپل آر ناٹ ریڈی ٹو اسپینڈ فار دی کاز آف اللہ فار دی پلیجر آف اللہ وٹ کڈ محمد ڈو صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ از ری ایشورنگ ہم ڈونٹ بی گریو او محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اف ایون آفٹر آل دیز آیات ہیونگ بین ریویلڈ دیر آر پیپل ان مدینہ ہو آر ویلدی بٹ ہو آر کیپنگ دیر ویلتھ ود دم دی منافقین دے ڈنٹ وانٹ ٹو اسپینڈ فار دی کاز آف اللہ دے آر آل آف دم ویری ویری رچ پیپل بٹ اف دے آر ناٹ ڈوئنگ اٹ لے سا علیہ کا خدا ہوں اٹ از ناٹ یور ریسپانسبلٹی to give them the guidance you can't give it it's in, not, not in your power you don't have the authority Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every human being a choice it's his own choice he can take any choice he can choose anything he can take, take any direction imma shakira wa imma kafura so don't be grieved laysa alayka hudahum wa la kinna allah yahdi wa yasha This authority is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives guidance to whomsoever he likes. He can change the heart of a person. The Prophet had said that the hearts of all human beings are within the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yusarri fukai fa yasha. He can turn the heart of the person in whichever direction he, 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 he likes. These hearts are in the two fingers, between the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Prophet didn't have that authority. He has, it has been said to him, in the Kala Tahdi Man Ahbab Tawala Kin Allah Yahdi Man Yasha, you cannot give guidance to whomsoever you like. This is exclusive authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives the guidance to whomsoever He likes. Laysa alayka hudahum, don't be grieved. Laysa alayka hudahum, the responsibility is not yours. You will not be questioned. As we read yesterday, Wala tu saru an ashabil jaheem. You will not be questioned about these people. Why they went to Jahannam? When you were there, when we sent you, even after your advent, why is so, such a great number of people are going to Jahannam? But it's not responsibility. You are not responsible. You are not questionable on that account. And whatsoever you spend, O Muslims, know that you are doing it for your own self. You will get the reward in the hereafter. Don't think you are doing good to somebody else. It's for your own self. And that also, if you are spending only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there is some pollution, some wrong intention is there, you want some praise from the people, that he is very sahi. He is a person of charity. Then you know even that is gone. Then it's the wastage. You will get nothing in the hereafter also. So now here after the persuasion, you know, this is inzar. If you are spending, see that you are spending with pure intentions. If there is pollution in the intentions, then you will get nothing. لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ هُدَاهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَحْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِأَنفُسِكُمْ وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا ابْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ مِنْ قَامَا تُنْفِقُونَ مِنْ خَيْرٍ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ And if you are spending for the pleasure of Allah as solely and exclusively, then it will be given to you in full. The reward will be given to you in full. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُسْنَمُونَ And you will not be wronged. You will not be deprived of your due rewards. Now comes that ayah which I mentioned in the very beginning. All this in fact for whom? Sadaqat are for the poor. Sadaqah always for poor. But in fact, fi sabirillah, for whom? Lil fuqarai alladheena uhsiru fi sabirillah. La yastati'oona warban fi al-ard. Yahsabuhum al-jahilu agniya min al-tafuf. Ta'rifuhum bi simahum. La yasaloona al-nasa il-hafa. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٍ لِلْفُقَرَاء These infaq, this infaq is for those people, those needy people, الَّذِينَ أُحْسِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ 
who have been surrounded in the cause of Allah, who have been encircled in the cause of Allah. Hisar, you know, Mahsur. Mahsur is one who is surrounded. There's no way out. He's Mahsur. Muhasara. Allah is Ustarufi Sabirillah. Who have been surrounded, confined, wholly occupied, whole time occupied for the cause of Allah. They have dedicated their lives. They are doing no business. They are not in any profession now. They have given up everything. They have, they have dedicated all their life, all their time, all energies, all capabilities for the cause of Allah. And I told you, unless there is a big number, not only one or two of such persons, no revolution can be brought about. It's not a part-time job. You can do tabligh part-time. Tabligh can be done part-time. Teaching can be done part-time. But ikhamatuddin, to establish the deen of Allah, to change the political, socio-economic order, which, re which requires a revolutionary struggle, that is impossible. There should be hundreds and hundreds of people who devote whole time, total energies, exclusively for this cause. Now they have to be fed. They are also human beings. They have to be looked after. Who will do it? The brethren who are doing it still part time. They are also working for that team, for that movement, for that revolution. But still they are part time. They are earning also. They should share their earnings with those brothers who have devoted themselves whole time, whole hearted. So this is actually the best use of infaq fi sabilillah. Lil fuqarai ladheena uhsiru fi sabilillah la yustati'una darman fil ardh. They cannot travel in the world, on the earth. You know, business was done on those days mostly by traveling. Export, import. The Prophet used to lead caravans before Wahi started coming to him. He was taking caravans to Syria. So actually, but there, now, when the Wahi came to him, when he was engaged in this dawah, in his mission, how after that he couldn't do? He couldn't go anywhere to do business. He never took any other caravan after that. And he didn't do any work to earn his livelihood. He had some money of Hazrat Khalija radiallahu ta'ala anha. That was there sufficient for him in his Bakki period. But in Madari period, actually it were the gifts of the people. The Hadaya. And then you know when the battle started, then the Ghanima, the Al-Anfal, the Pfei, these were the sources of his income, of his livelihood. After all, he had nine wives at, at one time, and he had to feed them. Then relatives, all these things were there. Then there were the ashab -e sufa Who were they? They were the whole-timers. They were not doing any business. They were whole-time in the mosque, learning Quran, learning Hadith. Whatsoever is being revealed to Muhammad, they are, they are learning it. At Makkah even, so many young people, youth, they were whole timers. Khabbab ibn Ard, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn, ibn Umm Maktoub, and then you know, Musa bin Umair, radiallahu ta'ala, the Prophet sent him to Madinah. How could he go to Madinah? Because he had actually devoted all his life. So he could go to Madinah. So that is, you know, you should have the history before you. They cannot go about on the earth doing business. Because they don't ask due to their humility and modesty. People think they are rich. They are not asking. They are not begging. You will recognize them with their faces, with their looks. If somebody is in need, even if he is not asking, you can see it written on his face. If you have the idea, they will never ask, La yasaloon and nasa il hafa. They are not beggars. They won't beg the people importunately. And whatever wealth and money you spend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verily knows it. 
So this is the final ayah on this subject. This is the last ayah of the 37th section of Surah Al-Baqarah. Here these two sections regarding infaq fi sabilillah come to an end.